Okay, uh, here we go. Part four. I'm gonna mass on the clay and start the ears today. So let's get going. It's cold and I'm having a cup of tea. Okay, so there's our, there's our gorilla. Gorilla my dreams. My gorilla suit was named Gruesome, formerly Carlo. Um, Carlo was from my man Godfrey. Oh, Carlo played the gorilla. And I forget where, oh, Gruesome's from. Someone's rocking my dream boat. Someone's rocking my world. I was sailing along. And uh, something or rather, something went horribly wrong or terribly wrong. Anyway, Bugs Bunny, uh, the gorilla was named Gruesome. When I saw that cartoon, I said, okay, I've got to do that. And I want you to know, it was completely quiet here until I turned this damn camera on. And now I got people outside with saws and I, yeah. Okay, you, you already said you don't mind, so I'm just gonna continue on. Yeah, 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 I hear you. And so does everybody on YouTube. They know everything you're saying and thinking. <laughs> Maybe they'll give a shut up. That's almost as good as telling people that uh, you're helping me when you give me a dislike. Because <laughs> I noticed that sort of stopped the dislikes. <laughs> really funny. Okay, so uh, yes, I'm gonna mass on some clay. So you can't see me, but I'm going over here to the machine that goes bing. And I have several of them, Mr. Dex, uh, all different sizes. Um, and their convection ovens. Now, what I've done is I've made the clay uh, very malleable by uh, <laughs> putting it in the oven. Yeah, so it, it just said that. But now we can, because uh, this has to be a mask. Uh, with much as I'd love it to be a prosthetic, we want it to be a mask that you, that you can display proudly in your mask collection. Okay, so, yep. You hear that, Mary? No, I mean, you know it was absolutely quiet until, until I got the camera going, and then they started sawing for teens. We'll see how many of our uh, viewers know what sawing for teens comes from. <laughs> I love playing that game. Yeah. Days like this, you don't feel like doing anything. <laughs> it's another line from it. Oh, where's my tea? Uh. So I'm moving very quickly here before the, before the clay gets uh, cold again. But I'm gonna mask this out all the way back to the very edges of this life mask and then I'm going to rough out some ears and then I have to go home because they delivered my latest radio controlled airplane model to my doorstep and it's sitting there right now and it's my hope that it's still there when I get home so I don't have to order another one which is exactly what I'll do should it not be there but luckily where we live um, we're off the street. We're inside of a uh, retired community where they think I'm retired. <laughs> uh, we're, uh, we're not on a main street. We're, we're not like on uh, our, our house does not face a street where you can drive by and see that there's a package there. You have to walk in. It's kind of like the village. You know? So... There's no streets facing the homes. They're just all these little little houses next to each other, and they're all inside a community. So I've been very fortunate so far. So I, 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 I try to keep talking and making noise so as with hopes to uh, drown out all the noise in the background. When we're shooting films here, it's always fun because we have to t ask them to be quiet. And I will pick a weekend to be here when they know they're not going to be here, and they'll all show up. 
And they're out there having a party and laughing and carrying on and slamming and crashing stuff. And if you go out to ask them if they could be quiet, they're not real happy with you. We did it anyway. Luckily, I had a sound man on the last film that knew how to get rid of them. So, in post-production. So I just want to get all this clay on here as quickly as possible. And then it can get cold. I don't care. And then I can show you how I use the... Uh, that tool or something like it that gets everything smooth, which I'm looking now and not seeing, which is, you know, par for the course, but I think I know where it is. Okay. And I have to put clay all the way up into here. And of course, nothing will do that we don't get bits in it and pieces of hair and stuff. You know, makeup effects studios are, are dirty places. Now, there's enough clay and stuff around my eyes that that will act as a mold release, although I will be putting some Vaseline in there. Oh, come on, Clay. Stay, stay warm. Feels so good on my hands. Which I'm losing the feeling in. It's so cold out here. And just a few days ago, it was in the 80s. Oh, there's a pestilence on the land. It was in the 80s. And we were hot. Then it went back to being cold. Then we had thunder and lightning and hailstorms. And, uh, you know, if you never believed in climate change before, you will now. <laughs> I'm not saying who did it, but I'm saying we have it. Okay, so now, and slowly, by that name, we don't call me, <laughs> becoming a half-face mask. The thing that always interested me about Planet of the Apes and the background masks were how they did not look like people in the prosthetic makeups. Now, I know Steve Dix right about this time is thinking the same thing. What, what was up with that? Well, they hired a lot of sculptors, but you know, there were decisions made too. And I don't know what it was uh, that, that had those masks look so unlike the actual makeups. Uh, some of them did, kind of, sort of, but overall, they did not. Um, and it would be very easily, easy to just uh, clay press out or just, you know, do what I did and make them look like the prosthetics and how the people would look when they were made up. But they didn't do that. And that's, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm doing what they didn't do for whatever reason. I just always found it fascinating. Now, I don't worry too much. I'm going to blend all this off, of course, but the hair is up to here. So everything's behind this line. This is strictly mass area for rubber, and for it to be a mass, and also to bulk it out a little bit bigger in case you do decide to wear it, although I will tell you now that I only ever had one person return one of these masks because they couldn't wear it. Um, I need to change the description on the website about that too and say you can wear them sometimes but they may not always fit you because you know they're made on a life mask they're not made to fit everyone exactly they, they can fit people and I have a very large head so overall they should fit but this person was very uh, disappointed didn't didn't he bought it for someone and it didn't fit him and 
and he wanted his money back. And it's like, I said, okay, fine. I'll just send it right back. Oh, 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 okay, thank you. And that was that. So I never heard from him again. Probably never will again. But uh, I'm going to have to put on the website that these are mostly attended as a collector's piece. Uh, you know, it's not, if you want a Halloween mask to wear uh, around Halloween time, go to a Halloween store and get a monkey mask or something. And that'll probably work better for you. I don't think he got that this was a collector's piece or that it was, you know, from Planet of the Apes and all that. He just thought, oh, cool monkey mask. I'm going to get one for my brother. And Oh, it doesn't fit, so I don't want it. So I got it back, and the next day it was sold again. So just like that. It was sold immediately. I had another guy once <laughs> who wanted a six finger mask. So I made it in four months and he was all excited about getting it. He lived in Florida <clears throat> and uh, his address wasn't working when I tried to click and ship it. And this was at the height of the pandemic. People were dropping like flies daily. You did not want to go anyplace public, like stand in line at the post office and risk your neck for a $300 mask. You just didn't do it. I don't do it. So I told the guy, I said, your address is not working. Oh yeah, uh, he says, we always, uh, I have that problem a lot. You, you can't uh, click and ship. You got to go to the post office and, and, sta and stand in line and, and you know, ship it that way. And then they will take that address. And I said, no. And he said, why not? And I told him, I said, you know, you might have heard there's a pandemic going on and people all around me are dying and dropping dead of this stuff. He called me a coward and a sissy and a loser and demanded his money back. <laughs> but out of, you know, I've lost count of how many masks I've made. He's the only one. Uh, besides the guy and his brother. More clay from the oven. Oh, I've got to take the plastic off. So this is how the clay comes. Chavant. Plastiline, two pounds. In case you want to know how many grams it is, it's 906 grams. Too heavy to fly without wings. Where? There. <sighs> and it looks, I mean, it's the same size as Plastilina, the same kind of packaging, everything as the original Plastilina, although the Plastilina was, was uh, green, but kind of a light green. There we go. Boy, that can't, comes off easier when it's, when it's heated up, too. And there is, it's got oil in it of some kind because it's sweating oil. Anyway, we're just about there. Is my big fat head blocking it? I bet it is. Sorry about that. But when you heat this clay up, it's like oil, it's like water-based clay. I mean, you can work with it so fast. So if you think, uh, you know, and I know Steve, because you talked about your thumbs or something. Well, yeah, I've got a thumb here. It's so painful right now that um, I could scream. And you'd hear me all the way across the pond, but um, we just kind of ignore it, just keep moving on. Okay. It's looking good. You see, right before your eyes, I was, I was able to add all that clay. Okay. So now it's roughed on. Now we have, you know, this will be all the mass area that we need to put on here to make it a, love, a latex mask and all that kind of stuff. I'm blocking again. I have to look over my shoulder sometimes to make sure I'm not blocking and a lot of times I am and I'm sorry about that. Yeah, I, you know, I've been tempted so many times 
to uh, also do some prosthetics. Now, they're problematic to sell. I have to charge a lot of money for them. Foam rubber is not expensive, but the process of making it labor-wise is. And then they don't last forever. You can make them out of silicone, but then they have to charge hundreds of dollars for them, not just a hundred dollars or whatever. So that's more expensive. And but I kind of like to make myself up again. Before I get too old, can't do it anymore. Instead of just old, I'd be too old. Okay, so now where is that tool? I can't find my popsicle stick. Oh, yeah. There it is. I went right to it. Wow. Okay. Now this has got some, uh, all right. Ow! Oh God, this tool is sharp. I'll show it to you in a minute. These, right here, you buy these at any place that sells art supplies oriented towards sculpting. And you see the serrated edges on it. This really hurts when you get your catch yourself in it. And as soon as my next door neighbor, Christian, is done farting. Anyway, you see how all this is rough? Well, I hope they have a little spot there. I will make this all smooth pretty quickly. So I go like in one direction like this, and then the clay it comes off, you can use to fill uh, dips in. And be careful not to go really fast and mar your sculpture, which I've done many times. And we'll see that spot right there? Go right with that. Smooth it down with the flat side. Then go like this and like this. And the more I do this, I'm about ready to send that alcohol flying. Not that kind of flying either. Okay. I keep doing this and doing this. And this is where it starts to hurt bad, my thumb. Being careful not to mar my sculpture. So I go in one direction, like so. I start going the other direction. You gotta be really careful because this tool will get you. It is nasty when it digs into you. Serrated cuts always hurt more than smooth cuts. I think. You never get yourself with a steak knife. That that cut hurts more than just like a razor blade cut. And the more I do this, the smoother all the planes get, the curve, and it all becomes, it doesn't really matter what it looks like underneath there, because as I've said before, it's all going to be covered in here. But I still like to be pretty smooth. Okay. Mary's up to something. What is she doing? <laughs> oh, she's going to the bathroom. Never mind. <laughs> Just trying to get it kind of flat to the table. Also, you know, by having it all smooth like this, it releases from the mold better. Uh, I used to spray uh, things with Krylon to put a seal in it, and it did help pull the clay away from the mold. Last of my tea. It did, but it also left a residue behind on the surface of the plaster, and I'm probably going to use UltraCal 30 for this one.
because the plaster wears out so fast and half face masks, uh, they, they always set up plenty thick enough, even on UltraCal 30. But anyway, I, I digress. Um, what happens is, is that sometimes the Krylon, the clear coating, sticks to the surface of the plaster or UltraCal. And what happens is it, it becomes part of the surface and you should probably remove it with acetone, but even that's not great. Um, don't use it at all. Uh, Rob Berman told me about this. He says, I never use it. And uh, that's why, I'm sure. I didn't ask him why he never uses it, but I would bet biscuits and navy beans that that's what it was all about, so. Uh, so then what happens is, is you got a plastic film on the surface of your plaster mold, so it's not going to absorb the moisture out of the rubber and build up that nice thickness that you want uh, of latex evenly, and you'll have these thin spots in your masks, and they're annoying. Almost as annoying as my next door neighbor sawing when I'm trying to uh, work. That's right, this is work. And it's funny about people considering this work because I've, uh, I've had family in the past and relatives and even my own mother who thought, didn't take what I was doing seriously. At, at all. In fact, I don't think my mother really believed that when I went to Hollywood, I was really working in Hollywood uh, and, and making, had a job. Because one day she called me and said, I saw that movie you said you worked on. I said, oh yeah, what movie is that, Mom? She said, Ghostbusters. I saw your name in the credits. <laughs> and so a lot of people don't take this work seriously. I think you're playing. So, yeah, that's an interesting phenomenon, too. Continuing on here, I'm just smoothing this out. You probably can't see it. You can. Yeah, you can. I'm going to get it pretty much as smooth as I can. Then I'm going to take the other side of this and smooth it all down. Hi, Rosie. Oh, boy, there goes the camera. I kind of like that angle better anyway. Um, no, I'm just going to keep it up. Sorry about my head being in the way. Yes, contrary to, con to, to, contrary to popular beliefs, <laughs> this is work. And what is wrong with enjoying your work? I mean, there's a lot of jobs that are jobs, and they're hard to do, and people enjoy it, whether it be building bridges or pouring concrete. Um, you know, not everybody hates their job because um, you'd rather be doing something else. I happen to love carpentry myself and building things out of wood, and I just like making things. Sailboats, airplanes, rockets, clock cars, real cars. Oh. Whew. See? It's actual physical work. Oh, especially when your thumb is killing you. Well, my thumb is terribly delicate today. Dr. Smith. I love the new Dr. Smith, too. <laughs> she was a riot. That actress could peel the paint off a ceiling. She was really good. You know, a lot of people didn't like her. I thought she was great. In fact, I really enjoyed the new Lost in Space. Hopefully, I will enjoy the, uh, the new Voyage of the Bomb Sea as much. We'll see. Probably many of you don't even know that there is a new Voyage of the Bottom of the Sea, and it's going to be uh, 
I guess it gets released pretty soon. I happen to know someone working on it. I can't say names, but I do. Yep. A new version. There. So, okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this and kind of do this. And that smooths down all that stuff. Then you can do some, some of it by hand, but I'm not going to go too far because, as I said before, this is all going to be underneath the hair. I just want it to be pretty clean and smooth surface. It will make it for easier casting and removal from the mold. But that's how you get all that. And then what I'm going to go to next, after I hit this pretty well smoothed out, is um, the ears. Now, gorilla ears are very tiny compared to chimpanzees and even human ears. They're closer to human ears. I put up a picture, but I'm sculpting. <laughs> oh, that's right. I'm going to edit this later. Well, maybe I'll put one up. But basically, the ears that are on uh, Moonwatcher that I did are very similar. And I'm half tempted just to put a pair of those on here and mold them, but I'm not. I need it to all be in clay. I didn't think this would take so many parts to do, but it is, and, um, but you all seem to be enjoying it nonetheless, so um, I'm having a hard time. I'm going to get in here. It's kind of hard working around the camera, so I'm sorry to block you once in a while, but... The stuff up close, I'm just going to clean up with by hand and my thumb and a brush because I'm worried about hitting my sculpture. So, but you see how well that smooths everything out. And if you really want to be anal retentive, and this is something uh, less organic, you could actually uh, you can scrub this clay going back and forth with the scrubber so it's, you know, literally shines. I mean, Rob, Rob Berman is really good at that when he did that helmet. Um, you know, it just, that would not have been my approach to the helmet. I would have, you know, probably made it out of hard materials and all that kind of stuff, but that guy can sculpt anything. He'll just like, oh, I'm going to sculpt a helmet out of clay? Yeah, why not? Okay. He likes to hand paint his mask. Uh, I tried it. It's, I, I just can't get the same effect as I do with the airbrush, but he does. He's a good makeup artist, Rob Berman. If you're not familiar with him, do a Google search. You've got Google. Go check it out. Now, I know Steve Dix knows who he is because he's taken his classes over there in Germany when Rob gets to travel the world with Jennifer and do things like that. He's a great teacher because he's taught me things, and I'm older than him. But I haven't been doing this stuff as long as him. Well, I have, but I mean, considering he grew up in a family of makeup artists. His dad, Tom Berman. You don't know who Tom Berman is? Go look him up. You ever see the Planet of the Apes? Tom Berman. Uh, let's see, what was it? Uh, what was the show? Primal Man was another one. I mean, he, he, you know, the cat people, uh, David Bowie. Uh, uh, he's done, you know, oh yeah, Man Fell to Earth. He did so many amazing movies. Uh, probably one of my favorite things that Tom Berman ever did was the remake, and I hate remakes. It was a great remake, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Really cool effects in that that he did, and very innovative. And, uh, and you know, they, there was a makeup family. There's Sonny Berman, Alice Berman, Tom Berman. They all worked with John Chambers at one time, as I did. They worked with him a lot more. I worked on a National Lampoon movie. I forget the name of it, with uh, Chambers the first time. And that was fun. We worked at his house. The CIA would show up. We'd have to leave because John was doing uh, secret makeups for him that later got turned into that movie. And so he would, he would tell us, 
I tell you what I'm doing, I have to kill you. John was a lot of fun. Not everybody liked him. But I got along with him just fine. He used to say things like, God love you, boy. <laughs> or if you did something that made him mad, he'd call you a lunch bucket. That was always fun. You know what you are, son? You're a lunch bucket. Well, I might as well tell you as I'm sitting here doing this stuff, my first day with John, I came in and, you know, and he, I was already hired. I forget how, but I was. I think it was under Rick Stratton's recommendation or something like that. And I came in and he says, so boy, you want to sculpt, huh? I said, oh yeah, because that's what we all wanted to do. And you know, here I am in front of a god, you know, the guy who did the Planet of the Apes, the head, figurehead of that whole production, uh, got the Academy Award for it. All of that. And I said, yeah, I want to sculpt. Said, oh, yes, yes. You know, yeah, yeah, that's great, boy. And he hands me a broom. He says, but first, see if this fits. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, he was great. We got along fabulously. Never had a problem. He told a lot of great stories about World War II, some that I can't say. <laughs> um, I remember somebody asked him, he, Somebody asked him about, so what did you do when you were in World War II, John? He says, I killed Germans. <laughs> he, what was that like? He said, well, you shoot them, they kind of died. <laughs> he was very practical. He didn't talk about it much, though. I don't know many people who were in World War II that really wanted to talk about it, and I don't blame them. Anyway, John and I... Uh, we got along fine. Last time I saw him was, we had uh, sort of a roast for him at the old actor's uh, home over in Warner Center. And uh, it was great to see him that last time. And everyone else too. Roddy McDowell's the last time I saw Roddy. I didn't know it'd be the last time I saw him. I didn't know he had cancer. I hadn't heard he had cancer. Martin Lando was there, who I'd never met but ran into in the hallway and he asked me, you know, where is the thing? Because I was taking a break outside. And I said, what's in there? And, and I sort of stopped him and I said, you know, Martin, uh, I really liked your work. And I said, but my favorite work of yours was in The Outer Limits. And he, he just loved that. And we had a nice talk about The Outer Limits and John Chambers and that whole experience. It was really a neat thing to meet him. Because um, I've worked and met a lot of people, but some got away and then, you know, once in a while, you know, one of them would walk into your life like that. So, there. So that's fairly smooth and pretty much ready to, I need to do some more blending off on this, but what I want to do next is the ears. I am running low on battery and that's really a drag. So, uh, what I'm going to do uh, it'll take a while to, to charge it. So this may end all of a sudden. Uh, but what I'm going to do is sculpt from memory. I, I can't find a single picture of the ears as it is. So I know my ears are about here. So I'm going to do this. I have little tiny ears, gorillas. And so I'm just going to kind of before your eyes sculpt the ear. Then I'm going to turn the camera off so I have some left at the end. I think you're seeing that? You are. Okay. And I'm just going to do kind of all by hand here. And because uh, we just need, you're not going to see it much when it's in clay. But we want to have, I mean, when, it, when the hair's on it and everything, but we want to have it there nonetheless. And luckily, I don't need reference for ears. I've been doing ears for a long time. Don't make them pointed, Steve. This is a gorilla, not Mr. Spock. Because I, I did those too for the first Star Trek movie. In case you're tuning in and you don't know my work, uh, yes, I got to do, had the great privilege of doing Leonard Nimoy's ears for the first Star Trek movie, Star Trek The Motion Picture. It was great. I mean, it was just, Spock was always my favorite character when I was a kid in high school. I uh, always wanted to meet Gene Roddenberry, always wanted to. I had dreams about working on the set and stuff, and it all came true. Imagine that. So it's kind of something I, I think about all the time still. 
And when people ask me in interviews, what was your favorite thing you ever did? They're always thinking I'm going to say Ghostbusters. But it wasn't. It was Star Trek. So basically, there's a real quick roughed out ear, which I'll have to go inside and make a little bit cleaner. But, you know, that's about right. Yeah. So now i got to do another one. But we're going to save camera. We'll come back for that. Okay, so, ha ha. So I got the other ear on, and they're both roughly sculpted, and they're kind of so soggy from the, from the um, alcohol. But tomorrow they'll be dry enough to, to finish off. It won't take me very long. And then I can texture the rest of this. You notice I put this a little bit of the hint of some stuff going on up here that would, uh, you know, when I lay hand lay the hair, it would look uh, a bit more natural if I have some thinning hair here. And there's a little bit of wrinkles going on there. So let me get this light right behind it. Oh, there, now you can really see it popping, popping. So that's going to do it for today. Uh, it's kind of a shorter video, kind of, sort of. Uh, but I had to cut it short because we're, we're running low on battery. I got to charge up the Sennhauser microphones and I got to charge up the main camera uh, which I'm at this point in time showing you a picture of. I threatened to do that before and, and now I am doing it. Uh, try not to drop this on the model of discovery below me but uh, this gives you sort of a size reference uh, for this and uh, it's really starting to look the part. So tomorrow we will do uh, some more uh, finishing on this and probably call it done and with any luck if my ultra cal is still good I have to check it in a minute we will start making a mold of this on Friday it only take a little while to do a mold because it's one piece and uh, that means on Monday we could open it up and take a look inside dry it out in the oven and run a latex mask next week and then I'll take you through the process of pulling it out of the mold trimming it up Dremel tooling it painting it, and putting the hair on. Does it sound good? Let me know in your comments. And again, thanks everyone. God, you guys are just so, so amazing. Um, thank you for all the, the, the love and kindness and likes and views and all that. So it uh, makes my world go around. Thank you very much. Anyway, we'll see you tomorrow.